what is good YouTube? It has now been a good few months since I did my last Edison Format metagame tier list. Last one I did was back in the winter before we really had any results for 2024. Now that the season has gotten underway, we've had our first big wave of events. So I wanted to do a little bit of an update here, kind of represent some of the shifting metagame landscape in 2024, um, as well as a little bit of uh, shifting opinion of mine mixed in as well, because it wouldn't be a tier list if there wasn't some, uh, some takes in there as well. Uh, as always, we have a whole slew of decks to go over, and we have deck lists for all these different decks, just to show you what the, um, what the, uh, the, the builds kind of look like, I guess. Uh, same tier structures last time. I felt like we had a real good happy medium built here between the bajillion tiers and, like, having only four tiers. Uh, so this up here is going to be, like, the top tier. Among the top tier, good will be, like, tier 1 to 1.5-ish. Mid, like, arbitrarily worse than that. And then we start getting down into the garbage, <laughs> the garbage tiers. So, yeah, a lot of decks to go through. Um, we have taken off some of the uh, some of the less relevant ones. Every time I do one of these, I, I end up shaving off a few uh, of, of decks that just like aren't aren't played at all or whatever. Um, that being said, there are still some wacky ones on here. I was trying to keep the list pretty concise but at the end i decided to add on just like every random build i had in my uh in my db deck builder which is actually not very many i only have like a half a dozen builds in there at any given time but i felt like if i had it on there i should might as well just tack it on to the end of the list um so I, I i apologize for that if that bothers you but you know we gotta have some filler in there and it's at the end anyway so yeah okay okay we can get into it because still got a ton of ton of decks to go through as usual so, um, starting off with regular fairy as we usually do. I was thinking of putting Valhalla fairy in here since it's it topped like a ribbit or so, or it got ninth at ribbit, but I guess that doesn't count as a real top result. And then like Valhalla fairy is just it's pretty whack, and we already have like three different fairy builds on here, so I didn't want to clutter the thing with fairies. But that's enough about that. Um, this is just the normal fairy build, uh, the classic one with the Cruders, DD Warrior Ladies um christia's or you know all the all the basic kind of fairy stuff uh it's i think this is cold madness is built actually from a wcq last year that topped uh so he's on that that minecon valley of course um and he's on trap cards uh, the legacy of yadas so this has kind of got all the up-to-date technology in here how do i feel about this fairy deck it's like okay what would i call it i think i call it here is this where i put it last time it may be. Um, yeah, my main gripe is Chaos Fairy is just better, in my opinion. Um, maybe that's just me being biased towards my own deck. That's a possibility. Then again, I wouldn't play that build if I didn't think it was better, so it's kind of like a circular logic thing there. Um, yeah, I mean, the Fairy deck does cool things. It hasn't really had a big meta impact in 2024 or 2023, honestly. I guess it had a few tops here and there in 2023 uh, between me and Cold Madness. Um, 2024, I'm not aware of the Fairy deck really doing anything at all. The only deck that's been doing anything with Christia and it was the Lightsworn one, uh, which we'll get to when we get to that. So I think this is fairly generous placement. Yeah, I mean, it's like not quite on the level of what I would call good, probably. Now, as for a deck that I do think kind of meets the, the threshold for good, maybe just barely, is Amaryllis. Um... This deck, I do think, is pretty underrated. Um, yeah, I think people just, for some reason, are addicted to doing weird stuff with this deck. When they could just play good cards. Like, you could just play a build like this, with like Hamster, Ryko, good stuff, and then just like good trap cards. And, and you know, maybe throw in a Lila to get off the charge, and have a Gores. Um, I think if you just do a build like this, you're like, you're chilling. I think... It's very much kind of like a, a pseudo Vayu Turbo, good stuff pile, but instead of Vayu Turbo, it's Plant Turbo. Um, yeah, I don't really understand why people are so obsessed with trying to like play all kinds of weird cards in here. Um, they're, they're always trying to fit in like Phoenix Wings and Necro Gardena and like the Botanical Lion Lord Poison thing and maybe the Volcanic Counter stuff that I used to do, which I still don't hate that, but... I just don't get what it is about Amaryllis where, where all the people who play it try to do these like weird builds like when you can just play good cards. You know, I I think if people just played good cards, the deck would have better results. I'm not saying the deck doesn't have results. I just think it could it has a lot of more potential to do better. 
I think this is a deck that can have, you know, a top every now and again at, at major events, like, relatively frequently. Um, but people just, like, play it weird. I just, yeah, I don't know. I like this build a lot. I, I have a build that also has Volcanic Counter in it. But, um, and I think they're both solid. But, yeah, I just don't really... I, 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 don't, I don't really think the deck performs up to the level that it's capable of. So I'm going to throw it up in good. It'll probably be, like, a bottom end of good. Because, like I said, the deck doesn't have a whole lot of results. I mean, it has some, like... It has results. I I shouldn't say that. Like it had it topped nationals. It had topped a ribbit. It uh it has plenty of IRL tops as well. So, um, but in terms of like the big online events, it doesn't seem to do as much. Maybe I'm like overemphasizing online, though. Yeah, I always make fun of people who like only focus on online or people who only think paper's real. But maybe I'm just kind of doing that in my head. That being said, Emeralds definitely doesn't top as frequently as a lot of the other stuff that's going to go up here. I do think it is just not living up to its potential, and I wish people would play, just, like, play more builds like this that are just, like, consist consistent good stuff, and I feel like it would it would perform. Uh, next up, we've got Regular Light Sworn. So, yeah, um, this is the build with Wolf and not Christia. Uh, I think I've changed my position on this because Christia Sworn has been killing it this year, so I used to think that Christia was the worst build, but now, I mean, it seems kind of undeniable that Christia is probably the better build. So I'll throw this one down in mid, and then when we get to Christia's Swarm, which won't be for a while, that one's probably going to go up in good. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Light Swarm's a, a solid, decent option for the metagame. I think it's kind of a, just like always been a, a decent deck in Edison format, just because the, I mean, JD is such a crazy card. You get all these crazy, you can always just high roll and mill well. So, I mean, Honest is a good card. You just got a lot of good things going for you in the Light Swarm archetype. Um, so I, yeah, I think I'm going to stick to decision. Pure Light Torn will go down here, and then, and then I'll put Christia up in, in good, probably above Amaryllis, because Christia's been taking some names lately. Uh, but yeah, as for Pure Light Torn, it's just kind of, it's still pretty good, but it's not Christia's Sworn level, I guess we're going to say. So, yeah, I think that's a fair placement. What do we got next? We're moving on to Hero Beat. All right, this is one we got to talk about, isn't it? Oh, man, Hero Beat, Hero Beat, Hero Beat. So, this deck, I don't know, has it been topping as much in 2024 as it was in 2023? I don't feel like it has. I should have really, like, looked at numbers and familiar myself, familiarized myself before I did this video. But I definitely have looked at a lot of top 8 lists, and I don't think I've been seeming as much hero beat. But it's definitely still been there. But it, like, has the whole never wins and, like, tons of representation thing going against it. But maybe it's probably too mean of me to put it below good. I'm going to put it below Amaryllis, though. <laughs> like, I really... I do not think Hero Beat's that great. Like, yeah. It just is kind of... It is just kind of mid, isn't it? I It's got great consistency, I guess. And, you know, if you've got the right combination of Gem and Spark... Hero Blast, Miracle Fusion in the right order. The, the deck is awesome. This is kind of true of every deck. Uh, I mean, it's got a lot of solid things going for it. I just, yeah, I mean, the the results things are, the, the math and the numbers definitely kind of indict some weirdness that's going on with Hero Beat where it just, like, cannot win events. Um, I don't know what that is exactly. Is it just, like, a bad Vayu matchup? Is it, what is it? What is going on with Hero Beat where it just, like, Super represented, can't win. The conversion rate, admittedly, not great, too, is another thing Keegan talks about a lot, where it's just like, there's a ton of hero beat decks, and it just doesn't top very much for how much you would think, given how much it's played. Um, I think I will... I, do I put it down here? Do I dare? Do I dare put it down here? Maybe I do full on... Will people get mad at me if I put it down here? No, it's probably not this bad. It's like... Do I think... Hmm, do I think it's better than Light Sworn? It's probably better than Light Sworn. The question is how much better. All right, I'll put it up here for now, and we'll think about it, but it's like, I think this is a very borderline one. I think Hero Beat's kind of eh. I wouldn't play it. All right, next up we got X Sabers. Um, so this deck, like, almost topped a couple of events <laughs> recently, but I don't think it actually did top any of them. And uh, what did I always say about X Saber before? It's kind of just like a high roll, or high roll combo nonsense that doesn't doesn't draw its combo often enough, I guess. 
that's probably accurate. I mean, I just don't see... I don't really see the, like, reason to play X-Saber when stuff like Dragon Turbo and Christus won't exist. I feel like you can just... You can high roll a lot faster and more consistently with those. Hmm. But it has, like... <laughs> Do I count the fact that it's almost topped as being, like, in favor of this deck? We'll call it Rogue, okay? We'll call it Rogue. I couldn't find any recent tops for this deck. It's got, like, one top back in... Or, like, one ninth place in DDV from, like, a year ago or something. And then it's, like... It had some runs, but it didn't quite make it. So, I don't... Yeah, I mean, x Saber is just not quite there in, the, in this format. Obviously, it's crazy with the Shining Darkness support... But, and Edison is just, I don't know, it just doesn't quite have it. It just doesn't quite have it yet. Uh, it doesn't have it together. It's not consistent enough. Uh, yeah, you know, you you feel like you're on top of the world when you draw your combo and you're unstoppable. But then you just draw, like, awkward-ass hands that don't do anything and you lose. So, I, just, I think Rogue is fair. I probably put it down here before, so we'll we'll put it here. But this deck is not too good. Not too good. What do, what do we got next? We have a deck that actually is too good, which is Diva Hero. Yes, been loving this. This this deck has actually been kind of kind of performing better lately. I don't know. It's kind of been steady, I guess. Actually, it's one. It's one that's like you're never surprised to see it in top cut. You know, there's all. It's got some good players too. It's got like a true hero and bad robot. Does a true hero still play this? Actually, when's the last time a true hero played Diva Hero? I actually haven't been keeping tabs on that. But a bad robot's been playing it. I think bad robot topped uh ewcq playing diva hero right he was playing diva hero. i'm sure he was i'm sure he was uh the deck's just it's very solid like you got a great sort of um great ceiling great power level you can just like go crazy with his deck like i saw some replays where bad robot just like otk'd on like turn two uh, twice in a match or something it's just crazy crazy stuff um yeah, the deck has a crazy ceiling. It's got, like, just a lot of decent threats. You know, Caius is scary. The D.Va plays with Mali are always scary. Miracle Fusion to Ab-Zero. Ab-Zero, one of the best boss monsters. Speaking of best boss monsters, you also have access to Dark Arm Dragon, which is completely nuts. So, I mean, the deck is just, like, crazy threatening to play against. And, uh, yeah, it bricks sometimes, but it's surprisingly okay in terms of consistency, too, and the power is just nuts, so... I think Diva Hero solid good tier is where, is where I'm putting it. Uh, zombies. Zombies, zombies, zombies. That's a tough one. I used to think this was the best deck. Then it kind of fell off, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe it's kind of mid. I, I, forget, I never put it lower than, like, the second highest tier, though. I've always been a, a zombie supporter. And it's, like, not really changed from last year to this year, I don't think in terms of how the deck's been performing. It's definitely one of the best decks of the format. It's just a question of how high I want to put it. Do I put it above Diva Hero, below Diva Hero? I feel like... I almost want to say just, like, the same as Diva Hero. Is that a... Maybe a slightly better... Because I, the zombie engine is really powerful. Goblin Zombie's great. Mizuki's great. Zombie Master's great. Plague's great. You know, you probably abuse Return a bit better than, like, just any other deck, period, in the entire format, actually. Um, yeah, and then there's the builds with Instant Fusion now. I'll call it, like, maybe a hair better than Diva Hero, but they're probably just, like, the same. They're both, like, the crazy kind of combo mid-range things of the of the top-tier decks. Uh, definitely two of the, the more fun, entertaining kind of top-tier decks as well. Definitely two of my faves. So I'll, I'll just call it like the same as Diva Hero. I think that's probably reasonable. We don't need to linger on it too long. Vayu Turbo. Best deck, baby. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. People use the phrase best deck. I don't even know what that means. Like, is do we, do we mean like... I always interpret the phrase best deck to mean you would be stupid to play anything else. And I don't think that Vayu is nearly dominant enough to say that. Like, it's not even on close to the level of, like, Chaos Turbo in GOAT format or whatever. Uh, that being said, Vayu is still performing better than everything else. I don't think I'm actually going to end up... Well, we'll see if I end up putting Vayu at number one. But it is definitely up there, you know. It's definitely up there. I think it is better than most of the other Tier 1 decks. It's just, like, so... 
so so like versatile i guess is the like it's just a good stuff pile of all the best cards in edison format you can deal with like every matchup you know you don't really have any bad matchups you got all kinds of crazy stuff you got dad and sork you have synchro plays with plague spreader you got the kaias you got raikos you've got just the dark stuff you got trap cards it's just everything you could want in an edison format deck and the deck performs insanely well so i think uh definitely definitely value turbo up here next up we got quick draw mm, yeah this deck hasn't been performing great but uh the consistency of freya in top cut has definitely made me question some things about how bad quick draw actually is because yeah freya does just top a lot with quick draw like a lot uh maybe i'll put it up in just like mid we'll call it mid how about we call it mid i think that's i think that's fair we'll say it's like a deck with issues but if you got if you got the right pilot you know you can it could definitely happen i mean demonstrably for sure uh so yeah in honor of freya we also have freya's build which i i just don't even <laughs> i don't like 41 cards right geki break what is going on in here no charge of the light brigade <laughs> you're killing me freya but uh yeah i mean hey it works it works so yeah we'll call it mid we'll call it mid i think um i personally think amaryllis is the better dandelion deck but um you know quick draw's got some it's got good matchups against like basically everything except black wings so if we ever get to a point where for some reason black wings just falls down like below 10 percent rep or something i think quick draw could be a serious contender honestly but yeah i mean you do get destroyed by ddb and a lot of things post board as well but uh it can't really be worse than mid, right? I don't think it can be worse than mid, so yeah. Moving on to Dragon Turbo. I did mention that perhaps Value Turbo wouldn't end up at the top, and this is why. Um, so we have Ghost Riders list from something. I don't remember which event. It's like, whatever. It was one, It was some event that Ghost Rider slaughtered with Dragon Turbo. Could have been any event, honestly. Could have been any event, and you wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah, obviously this deck is just a, a monster, an absolute scourge of the format. You know, you just, you draw a bunch of cards and then you have some unbeatable friggin' combo and then you, you go off and you kill them next turn. I'm gonna put it above Bayou again. I But, like, Bayou Turbo's been doing great, but Dragon Turbo has also been, like, upping its market share at, like, a, an astonishing, an astonishing rate. Um, yeah, I think, uh... I think it's about time we start, like, putting some serious pre for Dragon Turbo in our side decks, honestly, because its representation is seriously, like, I, I just looking around, I feel like it's through the roof. I feel like I see Dragon Turbo everywhere. It used to be just, like, Ghost Rider was, and, and Hydro Pump were playing it. Now it's just, like, a solid portion of the metagame is, is playing Dragon Turbo. Not as much as maybe some of these other high-tier decks, like, like Hero or Zombies or Vayu. Not that much, but, like more than it was and the deck is just terrifying like it's so it's so obnoxious to deal with it's like really consistent and really powerful so i think um i think i put this deck number one last time i'll put it number one again i think dragon turbo is uh i think it's even spookier than Bayou. i mean are you ever actually like scared to play against Bayou turbo no one's ever actually scared to play against Bayou turbo it's just like a really fair sort of consistent deck dragon turbo will just slaughter you even if you're like even if you're like the best player around or something it's just like spooky as hell dragon turbo is crazy dragon turbo is wild start siding like some anti-spell or something like seriously we got to prevent this from taking over the format okay that's the thoughts on dragon turbo next up we got flamville um yeah I, we could show off the deck i guess we could show off the deck for a moment um man it just does it looks the same as in 2010 doesn't it i don't even know where I, is this souls build where did i even get this uh yeah um we'll call it this is generous <laughs> this is generous flambell is so trash like new people just don't even play this deck anymore honestly it's it might have to it might be on the chopping block for the next tier list um doesn't do anything no one plays it it's just subpar and like in every way so unfortunate unfortunate for flambell but it is it is true machina machina has not been performing lately yeah I, did it have a top this year i think it did have like one top was it a top at ribbit i think it might have topped at ribbit maybe i'm remembering that wrong yeah it's just like mid where, where do we want to put it in mid actually is this ordering right 
Yeah, I think this ordering is about right. I'll put it here. I think it's actually lower than these other decks in mid. Um, yeah. The deck is just kind of... It just kind of is mid. It just, like, doesn't do anything good enough to really justify putting it higher. Like, the the the, the core sort of Machina cards, they're very good, but they also get countered by a lot of things. Like, Sidra and Bottomless Trap Hole and Deep Prison are just a menace for Fortress. And, like, post-board, it, it gets bad again because Sidra, and then, like, DDV will kind of wreck you, too. Uh, the deck is just kind of... It's... It's not quite it's not quite on the level, so we're gonna call it mid. Uh, moving on to Disaster Dragon. Has this deck done anything this year yet? I'm trying to think. I didn't see any recent tops at big events. It's kind of like a once in a blue moon kind of thing, Dragon Disa Disaster Dragon will take a, a top spot. Maybe down here. Maybe we'll... I'll call it better than Machina. I think it's better than Machina. Yeah, I mean... It's just like Future Fusion or Bust dot deck. Uh, the build we have is one of the Chaos ones. People also play, like... A less dark-oriented... Flip Monster Dragon deck. And I guess there are also still people playing Masked Dragon in the year 2024. Um... Those are generally the builds of Disaster Dragon that are out there, but and the game plan's all the same. You get to Future Fusion, you summon some red meds, you just aggro down your opponent. It's an okay strategy when you get to Future Fusion. When you don't, you're just playing a, a, a bad deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, the results aren't haven't been too tremendously better either, so it's, yeah, it's just kind of eh. We'll put it in mid, I think... I think that's fair. I think around these decks makes sense. I think, like, around the level of, like, Quick Draw Fairy, Pure Light Sworn, Machina. That seems right. That seems right to me. Uh, Norlurus. It's just on the same Vayu build. I think it's, like, Pizza's build or something. Why is it 46 cards, though? I thought Pizza's build was 45. What's the extra card in here? All right, I'll, let's not let's not linger on that. I mean, yeah, the the goal is pretty simple. You fill up the graveyard with Vayu things, you Norlurus. And then you just start dropping big dudes. Um, kind of the same deal as all Norlurus decks. Got multiple draw engines in here to turbo through with the Dark Refers and stuff. So, um... Uh, this deck topped Orlando in 2023. And it topped Nationals in 2023. And hasn't topped anything since. What do we say mid, maybe? Mid is being friendly, actually. Every time I play this deck, honestly, it feels like such trash. Like, I just brick... So maybe down in Rogue is more accurate. It kind of does feel more akin to like X Sabers than this other stuff up here. This other stuff here up of here is like more reasonable, more consistent. This is more just like high roll. So yeah, I yeah, I, I kind of my personal feelings are pretty anti Norlurus. I don't like the deck's very good. I'll put it down next to X Sabers. I think that's more than I think I think maybe not more than it deserves, but I think it's about what it deserves. Moving on, so we got frogs. Uh, frogs. Yeah, we're still just looking at the hero frog build, which I think should be the best frog build out there, but the lad build is a thing that we should acknowledge. There is Ronox new deck with, like, Dandy Do Dandelion, Light, of Light and Darkness Dragons. Um, so, yeah, we should remember that that's out there, but there's, like, a billion Ronox builds out there at any given time. I think hero frogs still probably definitively the best frog deck i think this is fraser's list i always forget whose list i have but yeah um i mean it's pretty standard you got the 10 frogs you got the battle faders four monarchs junk synchron five heroes miracle fusion econ solex regeki break um so yeah just uh definitely a force to be reckoned with frogs uh i'm gonna put it honestly honestly here, the frogs have been killing it this year. Have you been looking at the results? I swear, like, frogs have been getting, like, an insane number of tops compared to usual, haven't they? I feel like they have been. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. There was an event where, at, like, peak of the beak or something, frogs got, like, half the top spots. Like, half of them. And that was, like, a, that was a big event. There was, like, 100 and... 50 people in that event so i mean that's pretty crazy i've been seeing them everywhere 
I think Frog, yeah, Ronox build, of course. I think he topped with that at least once. So, yeah, I mean, Frogs have been doing well. I This is a, uh, this is an upgrade for Frogs. I think I put them down here last time. I'm moving them up here. Frogs are actually, they're actually, yeah, they're worthy of top tier for me. They're worthy of top tier, I think. They've, they've just been putting results on the board, man. What can I say? What can I say? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, they're not as good as these two. I think they're just, like, more heavily countered by the sideboard. Although the sideboard can do some good stuff to Dragon Turbo. People just, like, don't side pre for Dragon Turbo. That's why I say they need to. Take out some of your frog pre, put it in for Dragon Turbo. But then again, frogs is still just, like, top tier, according to me. So maybe that doesn't make sense. But, uh, yeah, as it stands, people do pre a lot for frogs in the side. And they still do crazy good, so, like, yeah, frogs are just a, they're a nightmare. Frogs are a monster. I think, uh, I think top tier for sure for me, so, yeah. That is, uh, that is definitely a change from where I was before, but, uh, I really think frogs have, uh, frogs have proven themselves, so, yeah. Moving on to black wings. Black wings, black wings, black wings. This deck's just kind of been doing okay, like, you know, it usually tops some, it's been topping some. Uh, I'm putting it here. I think this is where I had it last time. I think this is about... Yeah. I think uh, Frogs, Bayou, Dragon, Turbo, I think are better. But uh, Black Wings should be better than all this stuff. Pretty easily, honestly. But I'm not going to put them up there yet. I don't know. I just never felt like Black Wings were the, the crazy, like, best deck kind of threat that other people say it is. I swear people exaggerate because of, like black whirlwind or something i don't know people get whirlwind shurred uh going second and they just feel like it's unbeatable so they assume black wings is unbeatable but that's just like a that's like a lower percentage hand than you actually think it is um yeah i mean oh, what's the build we got this is just like a normal normal black wing build they all kind of look the same but black wings will draw hands without whirlwind and then they don't feel so hard to beat so that's kind of <laughs> that's just kind of how i feel about them um, I don't know. I don't think they're quite as, quite as crazy as these top three, but they are still pretty crazy. Yeah, may, maybe you could argue up here. Maybe you could argue up here. I'm going to put them down here for now. I think this is more what I feel, but I've just, like, never been scared of Black Wings as much as, like, these other three, so it's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Black Wings are a very good deck, obviously. One of the best of the best, but I don't know... I could put them up here, maybe. Ah, it's like, I'm, I'm kind of split here. I'll just leave them here for now. I'll just leave them here for now. We'll move on. We'll move on to Gladiator Beast. This deck, this deck got a top. It got not only a top, it got a win. It got a win at Peak of the Beak, was it? This is Spiral's list with freaking Hero Signal in it. Actually, about as based as you're going to get for Glad Beast. is on Test Apes as well, which is pretty interesting. Um... So, I think we have to move it up a little, given that it did win an event. Where did I put it last time? I probably put it, like, down here or something. Uh, so, where will I put it now? That's the question. Do I think it's here? Or should I be, like, super generous and put it up here? I'm definitely not going higher than here. Because I still think the deck has serious issues. And like one, one top does not does not make you like. It still tops more infrequently than like random jank stuff. <laughs> Sometimes like roids and freaking neospatians top more often these days. Honestly, uh, where I'm gonna put it next to Norlaris. Eh, we'll call it. You know, what? I'll I'll give the GB Copers a win and I'll put them up here. You know what? I've been mean to you on every tier list ever. So this is this is my gift to you. This is the absolute best you're getting with the current state of things. Um, so yeah, GB, GB fans, don't hate on me in the comment section. I gave you a somewhat sort of favorable placement this time. It will not get better than this. It will not. Unless GB just starts topping every event, and then I'll have to be honest. But I don't think that's going to happen. So yeah, uh, that's... yeah. I, Definitely glad to highlight Spiral's build because it's very um, unique and kind of different from the GB builds we've seen before, but it's the one that performed, so, you know. Moving on to Gemini's. Uh, this deck just, like, doesn't top. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, I'll put it down next to Norlers. It's just like a... It fits really well here, I think, with Norlers X Sabres. It does have like a crazy ceiling sometimes where you're playing against it. And it just feels unfair, but it doesn't do it often enough to actually be like a real deck. That Well, define real deck. It, it's like a real deck, but not like a good real deck, if you understand that, what I'm saying there. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't top major events. It's kind of a high roll combo thing like Norlers X Sabres. I think this is a fair tier to put it in. So, I mean... I, I always feel like the Gemini list could be scary, but people just don't like haven't been messing with it enough, I think. I feel like if people experimented more, rather than just running the same kind of thing, there's like some serious potential there, maybe, but I don't know what that would be, so it's just kind of like an unfalsifiable assertion there. Anyway, let's move on to Christia Sworn. I mentioned this deck's been doing well. This deck's been killing it. This deck has been, been taking top spots, taking names. So, yeah, I definitely have to revise my previous assessment. I'm going to put it up in good. It's the question the question is really where in good am I putting it? It's like either here or it's like here. I think I can feel all right putting it Oh, do I do I think below Diva Hero? I'll put it right here. I'll put it right right below Diva Hero and Zombies, which I said were about the same. I think that is where we'll throw Am or throw Christia Sworn. Deck's very good. It just it still has some of the problems that Light Sworn has of like you know consistency and like getting rushed down by stuff like Blacklings. Um, and then it has the whole issue of being like just worse Dragon Turbo again. Uh, I think I mentioned that before, but. Yeah, the deck's obviously crazy. It's terrifying sometimes to play against. They just go charge, recharge, and you feel like you can't do anything. Um, and then they got the fairy cards, which are strong. So they got JD, which is strong. They got a lot of strong stuff. Yeah, I think uh, I do think that the D.Va decks are better. So I think this is a fair placement. Next, we got Chaos Fairy. Yeah, I, no one's really played this except me. And the last time I played it was November in rbet the list hasn't really changed at all because i feel like the list is perfect the way it is uh i do i said it was better than regular fairy how high do i want to put it how high maybe just like right next to amaryllis does that seem, like i'll just put both my decks right next to each other <laughs> does that seem fair i'll put it above amaryllis i think it is better yeah, that seems all right. I mean, it obliterates like Blackwings, but that's less valuable maybe if Blackwings aren't going to be like 25% of the meta anymore. Uh, that being said, it has like a decent matchup spread in general anyway, so I think it's just like a better version of the other fairy deck. I've always really felt like it was super strong when I play it, so that being said, it has been a while since I played it. I can't really see myself putting it much higher, but yeah, this is pretty high to be putting it anyway. Yeah, I think right next to Amaryllis. Maybe just like about the same as Amaryllis. Just like approaching, approaching tier 1.25. I don't know what we call this. Uh, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. Yeah, I mean, Chaos Fairy just very, very good, very versatile. You got all these crazy hand traps. You got the Caiuses to deal with things. Decree is awesome in fairies. Um, it's a Christia deck. It's got the orange light honest. It's just got a lot going for it. So, yeah. Gadgets. Are we, am I seriously ranking gadgets? What do you, where did I even get this list? This looks like it was built in 2010. Um, uh, gadgets just like routinely do not do anything. So I just probably right next to Flambell. Just like a 2010 deck that doesn't do anything. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty appropriate for gadget. I like how there's one Avarice. <laughs> I like how the, I like how there's two solidarity. <laughs> Where did I get this list? <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely a, a bad tier list, really. Okay, moving on. Monster Mash. We're representing Monster Mash with the Zuxid Montage Dragon build. Got to put some respect on that. Um, but there's a lot of different builds of Monster Mash. They're all just kind of piles with Witch and Gallus and like Battle Faders and usually Caius um, and often Machinas uh so monster mash just sucks <laughs> i wish it didn't i love it so much but like not playing spell traps is just really bad some of the best cards in the format it turns out are spell traps so it's yeah 
awkward one. I wish, I wish, but yeah, no, it's the, uh, it's not, it's not it, it's not it. Okay, so next up we got macro stun. Why do I even have this on here anymore? It like topped a couple things last year, and then people got all hyped about it, and it just didn't do shit since then because it sucks. I gotta say, I've played a lot of whack decks. And I think of all the decks I've ever played on the channel, Macro Stun is the very worst. <laughs> Which is crazy to think about. It's crazy to think about all the stuff I've played. But it's like among the worst, for sure. I've I've never felt as like my deck was as shit as when I'm playing Macro Stun. <laughs> oh, it's just like so... Such a, like, a fragile stun strategy where it's just like you got to protect the floodgate. And if the floodgate gets outed, not only are you not stunning them, but your deck doesn't work either. <laughs> so it's... This is a weird build. I think this is a build that got like two tops at the same tournament or something. Yeah, I don't remember the, the history behind it, but... Yeah, macro stun just sucks. No matter how you build it, it's, it's just garbage all around. Uh, okay, moving on we got rescue cat synchro cat synchro cat so usually we have the plant build i have a more standard build here this time um just because i don't really think the standard build is all that bad honestly i yeah i don't know why people stopped playing it i think like people just have like this this sense that spy descended as garbage which like is not great it's definitely worse than raiko hamster but like this is the deck to play it in if you're gonna play it at any deck um so i kind of feel like this deck's not that bad it's kind of just a good stuff pile you got the avarices the cat plays are good you got the boss monsters you got kaius raiko it can only be so shit when you when you've got that much good stuff going on um i've always been a bit higher on cat than other people so where am i gonna put this that's the real question it's probably somewhere in mid just like the middle of mid <laughs> how's that how's that for cat yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's a fair placement. Like, come on. You mean, the deck, if it draws well, or if you go first and open, like, Spy, Caius, or something, like, yeah, I mean, there's just enough good stuff that can go right for you, I think, that it has to at least be in mid. Now we got Dark Gaia, or uh, Rocks, or whatever. This is the release from Stone, Gaia Plate builds. Uh, yeah, I love the build, but I also hate the build, because it's just not good enough, so... What do I even... Do I think it's here? It's probably not as bad as this stuff down in bad. So we'll put it here. Yeah, I, I played this deck a lot. I wanted to like it, but it's just not... It's just not quite good enough, unfortunately. I was just, like, losing to the deck not being good enough. So it's sad. Sad. It's kind of like Monster Mash. I just want it to be better, but it's, it's not. It's not, and I've accepted reality, so unfortunate. Just, like, too... I don't know, not consistent enough. You don't really have enough defense. It's kind of awkward, so... Yeah, I wish it could be better, but it's not. Uh, moving on to Neospatians. This is not... Hold on, let me fix this. This build is just wrong. Hold... Where, where's my current... Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, there's, there's probably no fixing the side deck. Or I'm not going to at least spend the time fixing the side deck, but I think the build actually looks like this now. So that's what the main deck looks like. Um, the upstarts definitely have been very good. But, yeah, I mean, the deck's still relatively unproven. It feels at least solid. Post-board, you do need to have answers to uh, problem cards like Deck Dev and Oppression, uh, which is why you got that Triple Dust Tornado in there. Um, that being said, you can also bring in stuff like Deck Dev, which is very good in here. Uh, I think Game 1, you're... Game plan feels very efficient, very fast for sure. You got some nice stuff. You got Dark Arm Dragons. Dark Creator, if it comes down, usually wins you the game. Um, you got a lot of draw power. The Junk Sick Run plays are good. Searchable Grand Mole is really good. Um, Dark Panther can be good too. What do I think? I think the... It's going to be hard to put it that high just because, like... Again, I said pretty unproven build of the deck. Like, Neospatians have topped before, though with like different win cons i guess but the same sort of core engine i'll just put them over here in mid maybe ah. well how do i eh. Eh. we'll put it here we'll call it better than machina or something that's like <laughs> that's the best i can give it may i'm kind of gassing up neospatians here maybe like like i said completely unproven best i did with this build 
was like 4-2 at RBCT, and we didn't quite top there. So it remains to be seen. Maybe I'll play it at a, a tournament and top later in the year. Maybe I'll just kind of like switch to other decks. I don't know. Um, I do think it's got some solid stuff going on, so I guess we can throw it here, but this might be disrespecting Machina. It's definitely not disrespecting GB too much, because fuck that deck, but... <laughs> Okay, I think we've gotten to the point of the video that I mentioned earlier, that I spoiled, where we're just going to be reviewing a bunch of my pet decks. Oh, I say a bunch. We got like five of them here. So we'll try to breeze through these pretty fast. You, Bell. <laughs> I literally like just made this, so <laughs> I, it felt okay when I played it, but I have like literally no information. Literally no information. We'll call it... Can I like... <laughs> How many people are going to get mad at me in the comment section if I call it a rogue? I don't know. It's like so hypothetical is the thing. Maybe I should... Hold on. Hold on. I've got this. There we go. Ubel has her own tier. Their own tier. Between bad and rogue. Um, okay. Yeah. I th we'll just leave that. We'll just leave it like that. Next up we have Reptilian. You know, this deck maybe should have its own, like, spot on the tier list, because it's kind of its own thing. I guess it's sort of a quick draw deck, but that doesn't really have to be in there. There are builds without quick draw. Um, yeah, this is my latest version with the hero stuff. I think um, same sort of deal as regular quick draw. Blackwing matchup's a problem. Everything else, you're pretty solid. Uh, Vasky's a pretty good boss monster. Um... Especially, you got, like, just maxed out Vasky with Plasma, and then you got the Goats, Triple Debris Dragon, Dandelion, Foolish. All great ways of enabling these things. Um, I think that Offering is a very good card. I think that uh, Garden is a very good card. Naga is okay, too. Uh, tr where would I put this? It's kind of like Neo Spatian, actually, where it's just, like... I've performed okay with it at, like, one event. I said Zytalus just topped with this, though, right? But I guess, like, Neospatians has tops, too. So it's probably just, like, the same as Neospatian. Let's just put it right next to Neospatian. Probably underrated, but, like, not that good. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, Zytalos did just top with his deck at WCQ, which is fair. Um, I've never really tested this new build, either. I've never tested a build with three offering, and I think playing less than three offering was really stupid of me before, too. Um, so maybe I gotta give this deck another whirl. Who knows? Um, we'll put it here. We'll put it here. <laughs> we're, we're just getting... Alright, we're, we're being too high on our own decks here, maybe. Let's, let's, let's like, let's give our a deck a, a crappy rating. Actually, hold on. Can I put Moja that low, though? <laughs> this deck won an event. It wasn't a big event, but, like, I still had to win, like, like, seven matches in a row or something, so it was, that's not nothing. That's not nothing. I took it to Vegas, though, and our team lost. But... Oh, by, by the way, we gotta, like, just... We gotta just absorb how, how hype this build is. It's got Green Baboon in it. This build is so sick. Uh, yeah. Where do I feel on Moja? I think... It is, in a lot of respects, just kind of a cat deck. So I don't know how low I can really put it. <laughs> Because I called Cat just like a good stuff pile. And it kind of is also just a good stuff pile with like Ratbox instead of the Spies. Uh, what do we want to say? What do we want to say? Maybe just like Rogues. Yeah, I think down on this level. I think it is better than the Rock deck. Okay, I think it's better than the Rock deck. Is it better than X Sabers? I probably feel like the same as X Savers. Let's just put it between Norlaris and X Savers. I think that's a decent placement for Moja. Um, like I said, it's, Moja is just kind of something you do sometimes in this more like larger cat rat box thing, which is, it's just like not a lot of terrible cards in here, honestly. So yeah, I mean, the deck can be good. It can be bad. It can be bricky, whatever. I think Rogue is a fair spot. Karaz, I haven't played this in like ages. I have a new-ish kind of build with Fiendish Chain and no Titanial. I don't think we've played Titanial in a while, actually, though. Um, yeah, it has, like, good matchups into certain meta decks, but then it has, like, really bad matchups into other meta decks. 
The reason I stopped playing it is just because, like, Zombies and Vayu are just such terrible matchups, it feels like. Uh, it's probably similar to, like, Moja, then. Maybe. We'll just put it right next to Moja. I think this is a perfectly acceptable placement. Yeah, I mean, you've got some, like, good cards. You know, Debris Dragon plays with Gear Town. Definitely solid. It's just... Yeah, running into those bad matchups just feels so impossible. I don't know. Finally, the last deck on the tier list. Out of all of them, this one probably deserves to be on here the least. But I said I had to, like, throw everything I had in Deck Builder on here. So we got the, the Crystal Beast Continuous Spell Dragon Queen Turbo thing. Uh, I'm, like, very much still experimenting with stuff in here. Kind of like the U-Bell deck. It is really, really hypothetical. Um, we don't exactly know where the build's going from here. This is the build we have right now. Kind of testing out a Diva Hero situation with it because um you can get <laughs> freaking emerald turtle off of uh sapphire pegasus and because future fusion is a continuous spell um and because diva goes really well with dragon queen of tragic endings so i guess there's a couple cool things going on in here and also summoner monk is really sick in here too um you can get stratos or uh, crystal beast sapphire pegasus or volcanic rocket um so <laughs> This one's kind of like you, Bell, where it's just so completely untested, not even unproven, just like untested at all. I kind of have to put it like right here. Maybe better than you, Bell, within you, Bell's own tier, but. Uh, yeah, just because you got like Miracle Fusion and stuff, you got probably better plays, but I don't know. I, I, I haven't played enough matches with these decks. I just kind of threw them on here, so I apologize for wasting your time with that. That's going to conclude the tier list. Um, I think pretty definitively, I feel these are the top three decks. I feel these are the sort of top adjacent decks. Maybe, you know, you get to the high end here, you start getting into some really good stuff like Zombies and Blackwings. Uh, and then these are the decks sort of where, you know, you get the right pilot, you get the right luck, you get the right matchups in, 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 the, in your tournament run. You could you could pull out a top, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely an uphill battle. And then anything below this is just garbage, like just utter trash. So yeah, that's the tier list for today. Um, I'm sure you guys have lots of opinions, so be sure to put those in the comment sections. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it informative. And I'm going to see you for another tier list in like three or four months whenever the metagame has hopefully shifted a bit. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Peace out. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.